So we got some 90 degree screwdrivers in order to get these screws out. Okay, this is really annoying, but to get this thing in here, we need to take these power connectors out. Turns out these are power connectors. They are not RS-232. Okay, so now we're able to go through the port in order to get to that final very annoying screw. Okay, not sure if you can see it here, but if you look down through here, there's actually two screws on the bottom of the machine that we need to also remove in order to get this plate off to get to the back of the PCB. Ugh. I want to make sure this doesn't go flying around while we're doing that. I would not want to crack the tube here. Okay, so that's these guys. Okay, so finally here's the back of the PCB. Let me know if you see anything that looks particularly dodgy. Some of these could probably use reflowed, but I don't want to just start randomly taking soldering iron to it without some sense of where I should be looking first. Let me tell you, it was a real pain to get the back off that thing too. Yeah. Okay, so the flyback transformer is around here. Right now everything's discharged. Once we flip this on, we need to be very extra careful not to poke around here. Unless we're being super, 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 super duper extra careful. Because there is a 6.5 kilovolts, or actually it was more like 7 kilovolts line coming off of there, going to the anode cup. Kazap. Okay, so if you look here, there's test points G1, G2, and G4. And I think those correspond to these grid points G1, G2, and G4. And there's also a test point over here I saw labeled H. There's an H here and there's an H here. And I believe that corresponds to something over here. I'm not sure. Let's find out what's going on here. All right, here goes nothing. We're about to do some measuring on the G's. Okay, so we measured a difference of 12.3 volts between the heaters, which is what we would expect. G2 is a test point we found that corresponds to here, and we read 545 volts. This G1 test point, we're measuring minus 6.4 volts. So let's look at where this goes. So this goes down here through this resistor to this uh, brightness knob, this intensity knob. So I'm just gonna try to adjust that and see if my son can see lines appearing on the display. Okay. So, Sen, tell me if you start to see lines appear on the screen. All right. Wait, what's that? Scan lines? It certainly is. Oh, we, do we have scan lines? We have scan lines. Okay, those are a little overly exuberant. Let me turn it down a little bit. Okay, so there's something going on there now. That's progress. But it isn't exactly text. Remember when we plugged in the um, other, other CRT? and uh, we actually saw something that kind of looked like the vector, what we needed. Yeah. Which means there's still something wrong with the monitor. Yeah. Right. Okay, so we are getting scan lines though, but I think I know what to check next, what I want to see. All right. Okay, yeah, so see that trim pot that says bright? I turned that counterclockwise and that made some lines appear. Okay, so here's a close up. And what was your question, Z? What's the deal with the vertical black bar going down? Oh, that's because the screen is running at a certain rate, probably refreshing at 60 cycles per second. And remember, so the electron beam is actually scanning across. So it's only actually lighting it at any specific moment. And it's relying on our persistence of vision to form it into an image. But the camera is taking pictures at a different rate. So what you're seeing is sort of the fact that the camera going snap, 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 snap is out of sync with how the screen's refreshing the display. So yeah, so notice these brighter lines are kind of at an angle and they're denser at top than they are on bottom. That's probably meaningful. There's probably some things, other things that need adjusted. But I was expecting to see some sort of display from the program that's resident in ROM on the vector graphic that we saw on the external display. Okay, so I'm gonna start by probing the signals coming into the board. Okay, click on quick measurement and click on measure frequency. 60.1 Hertz, okay. And the next thing I'm gonna measure, I'm going to measure three down from that. 
which should be the horizontal input. Auto scale? Yeah. Let's see, what do we see there if we hit quick measurement? 15.72. Okay, so that's hor our horizontal clock signal. And then now what I'm going to do is I'm going to measure, let's see, the video input, which should be our signal. Okay, try auto scaling that. And let's adjust the horizontal here. I'll okay, yeah, so the, the, that looks like, that looks like, no, the other direction. I want to see this kind of pattern. Yeah, so that's, that's what we saw the other day that was giving us a readable, although out of sync display on the external monitor. So let me try that again. Yeah, okay, so what I want to do, that's the signal I want to trace through. Okay, so the signal comes in and it hits this Q101 transistor, hits the base. The emitter here goes through this resistor to ground with these bypass caps. So this is what's called a common emitter amplifier. So we should see a copy of the signal out here. But first I wanna see what kind of voltage we're measuring here. So I want to find R103 and measure the voltages on each side of that, just with the DC voltmeter before I actually plug this into a scope. And the reason I want to double check this is we have, depending on how things are referenced, a 400 or 500 volt maximum on our scope input. Actually, it looks like K is the signal going to the cathode. Okay. And if I look up here, I think I see a K. Okay, so I'm going to measure this K, assuming it's the cathode, what do we read? 34 volts. Okay, that sounds about right. And I actually just said that sounds about right authoritatively. I really have no idea if that it should be right. But anyway, let's, that's the DC that we're measuring. So that should be okay for the scope. Okay, now this does not look like what I'm expecting. This looks like some sort of Periodic pattern, let's see, that has a frequency, oh, it's janky, 15. Yeah, I'm not too sure how to interpret what's going on. It looks kind of like the horizontal signal, but it's confused about it. It's averaging 34 volts, but I don't see the kind of pattern that I saw when we looked. I don't see this kind of pattern, see those dots? It's not that kind of pattern. So I think the correct thing is not going to the cathode. So the next thing I want to try to do is to figure out what's happening here at this junction of the collector R103 and R144. Okay, so we found on the board up here through tracing around, uh, turned off everything, made sure everything was off. This one took a while to measure because it's hooked to this giant cap. But remember, we made sure everything was discharged. This measured 100K. We found 22 ohm. We found 100 ohm. Except this guy here, this is a giant resistor. It spans all the way across on the other side of here. This is measuring an overload. We cannot measure 680 ohms on that. So I think this three watt resistor is burned out. Okay, so the suspect resistor is this giant green thing here. I see they have this mounted off the board, I'm guessing to help with heat dissipation. Okay, you know what? I think the resistor was okay. All I did was take the soldering iron and just reflow it here and reflow it here. And this now measures 680 ohms. Now we're gonna try it out. If this works, I'm going to be so, I don't know what emotions I'm going to feel. Here goes nothing. That's on. All right. The CRT is humming. Dad, did you uh, adjust the trim pot at all? And nope. we're still getting lines. Darn. I really thought we were onto something there. Uh, we might still be. Okay, this is now the signal re read going to the cathode. It is periodic. It doesn't have the up-down sort of pattern that I saw from the vector graphic built-in program display that we get when we look at 
this terminal here. So uh, turn left that knob. Yeah, so that's the kind of pattern we get with that uh, boot screen, basically on the vector graphic from the built-in software. Also, if I scope the collector of that amplifying transistor. Uh, okay, now turn that thing to the left, 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 left. And now pl play around with the trigger the uh, knob and see if you can get it to trigger better. Yeah, so that's pretty much what's going to the cathode. The only difference between this output of the collector, I think, and the actual what's going to the cathode is there's a, there's a resistor. Yeah, okay, and play with the trigger again. There we go. Um, there's like a 100 ohm resistor. So I think that's that line pattern we're seeing on the screen, but we're definitely not getting the, this sort of pattern. So turn that left again. Yeah, we're not getting that. So that now, now that we believe that the resistors all work and everything, that's now making me suspect the transistor. Okay, now I'm doing the cathode. Okay, I'm trying to get to the left a bit. Rank up the horizontal. Okay, so I Wait, think- To the left, to yeah. back now, y'all. So I think what we're measuring here, this looks to be on the order of the horizontal sync frequency. I'm not sure what I'm looking at. But whatever it is, it's not the actual video signal. What is the video signal then? I... Uh, it looks like this. It should should have some more complicated pattern. Yeah, that's the actual video signal, but that's not appearing at the cathode. So I'm not sure what's going on. Okay, as a sanity check, let's look at the base and the emitter. Okay, so now here's looking at the base and crank that to left. Okay, so that's kind of what we're expecting. And now I'm also gonna look at the emitter. There should be a very similar signal. Okay, crank it to the left. No, it's doing something else. One second, Why is it doing something else? It should be acting like- Tweak the trigger here. An emitter follower, but it's not. It's kind of like, okay, so, and that's an inverted version of the signal that's showing up at the collector. Okay, crank that to the left. Yeah, but neither of those look like what's at the base, which is this. So it's not operating the way I'm expecting it to be operating. Oh, now we're getting 34.77 volts. Okay, so around 35 volts. Okay, so look back on the schematic. So we're reading about, what was it, 35 volts, more or less, here. And actually, I'm going to look at that on the scope to see how stable that 35 volts is. Okay, now what we're going to do is we're going to put the scope right here at this junction here. All right, so if I do that, we wind up with a signal that looks like this. Just, oh, where did the signal go? Hang on, hang on, okay. auto scale and shift it and tweak the trigger again. Yeah. Hang on, let's shift it. Should it look like that or should it be more more like DC? Huh. Yeah, let's look at what this is doing on the schematic. Okay, so this is going down here, going down here. This looks like it should just be creating a voltage. I'm not sure I should be seeing all that junk there. I don't know. Leave a comment below if you have any insight as to whether that looked good or not. We'll be honest with you folks, we have no idea what we're doing. Yeah, that that amount of junk here seems suspect to me. Do you wanna try uh, measuring the voltage using the scope? Well, that's exactly what we're doing. No, but like with the quick measure. Oh, measure the DC? It. Yeah, go ahead, go ahead and look at the average. Now we're gonna press quick measure, measure, and then select, what are we gonna measure? Let's measure an average, first oh, of all. From Okay. And then measure average. That should be around, th okay, that's average we expect. And peak to peak is 300 millivolts. Okay, so I don't know, maybe 300 millivolts, whatever that gunk is, on top of that 35 volts, maybe that's not bad. I don't really know. Although maybe, maybe it should look better and maybe this capacitor is getting wonky. So it looks like this is supposed to smooth that out. So maybe- How do we test capacitors? 
Oh, there's different ways. But first, I want to ask the internet if that 300 millivolts ripple we were seeing is problematic or not. So that Q101, I'm going to measure, we're going to do a diode check between the base and the emitter on the multimeter. Okay, what are you reading? 0.53. Well, it's 0.53 volts, so it'd be... Yeah, 53 okay. millivolts. Yeah, that makes sense. Okay, so that sounds like a working junction. Huh, I'm really not sure what to do next. Help us, YouTube comment section. I wonder if it would be a bad idea or not to just go through the port and systematically reflow everything based on what we discovered with that 680 ohm resistor.